Moments ago, we just heard Joni Ernst, uh, Republican response to President Obama's State of the Union address. And a lot of interesting points were made going back and forth between what Republicans and Democrats would meet up on, agree upon, and disagree upon. And of course, as usual, they do disagree upon a lot of different things. But joining us today, we have Stephen Alakara from the Millennial Action Project and Ryan Skinecki from the Can Kicks Back, as well as Tom Rogan. And we're gonna just talk about a little bit of the millennial response. So Tom, I wanna start with you on your initial thoughts of what you thought about President Obama's State of the Union address and how it deals with policy versus politics. Yeah. I thought it was a, a very strong address in terms of the president's presentation. He's obviously very confident. Uh, you know, that one remark where he went off the cuff and challenged Republicans who gave him a bit of heckling about it being his final campaign showed that this is a president really who does feel bold. But I think the debate in the coming days is going to be, you know, I'd be interested to see what Ryan and Stephen think about this. To what degree, as you say, was this speech about politics in terms of the president playing to the democratic base and trying to galvanize that base on the more liberal side and what degree was it actually a policy address that has some chance of delivering uh, on the proposals that the president outlined tonight and i think a lot of republicans are probably going to be quite skeptical uh, that the, this speech was actually designed to to generate uh, consens consensual policy but i mean we we'll have to see what do you guys think about that i, I mean i think that's probably true i, I mean uh, you know they a few days or saturday they released a lot of the hard numbers behind a lot of the taxes and stuff he was talking about and i think that's a lot of the, the policy stuff. This was more about the politics of it, playing to the base, uh, you know, talking about things that are really a priority to that democratic base, the, the child care. Um, middle class tax cuts really work, are great for everyone, but they really do a lot, they test a lot better and pull a lot better with that democratic base. So I think it is definitely a, a political speech, but a, a great speech. I mean, uh, probably one of the better state of the unions he's given. Um, and, uh, you know, he always gives a good speech, but that was pretty strong. The headlines leading up to uh, the speech were on community college, on the tax reform, and of course he spent uh, about the first third talking about workforce development, skills training, uh, investing in science and technological research. But I think the real headline coming out of this that a lot of people didn't expect was the, the passion at length that he spoke about creating a better politics in this country. Clearly, that was the part that he felt most uh, interested in. I think the president feels the responsibility. Uh, he knew, he even referenced his speech in Boston 10 years ago, uh, that we're not a red America or blue America, we're a United States of America. And I think he knows that the politics in our country has, in fact, uh, from a polarization standpoint and many other perspectives, worsened during the time that he's been in office. Um, so although the headlines coming in were uh, policy, particularly economic policy, trying to come back from this recession, I think the headlines coming out uh, should be how he wants to really focus on revitalizing the politics in this country. Now, when you talk about the revitalization of the politics in this country, what exactly do you mean? Do you think that that's going to be possible going forth with uh, both the chambers being Republican? Well, actually, I do believe there's some potential, but let's take a step back. First of all, the president uh, started the speech saying, you know, I'm not going to give you a you know, 10 point plan on each of these areas, but in fact, speak to the values where I think we can have uh, agreement. So, uh, for example, you spoke to um, you know, this being the 50th anniversary of Selma. And, you know, we might have different opinions on various things related to civil rights, but we do agree on the importance of voting. Uh, he spoke to the importance of civil rights in general. So he's trying to pinpoint these common values that we have uh, and where uh, then we can build policy consensus on top of. So, Yes, now Republicans obviously control Congress, but on a range of issues, including criminal justice reform, there is great potential for bipartisanship, and the incentives have changed. In the prior sessions of Congress during this president's tenure, the incentives were to oppose him, and those politics ended up working. But now there's a responsibility to govern, especially if they want to win in 2016. And, 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 you know, Ryan, jump in here. Do you think there was any one proposal in the president's address or two proposals that has a lot of potential for, you know, compromise between the two sides or actually just agreement on the face value? Well, I mean, tax reform is something that both parties have talked about at length. And Republicans have talked about the want to do it, you know, now. 
Um, so I think that has some potential, but I'm just going to have to, just, I think it was great that he talked about let's get beyond partisan politics, but a lot of the policy points he put forward on, right. say, tax reform and stuff were pretty partisan. He didn't throw out a lot of, you know, bones to Republicans on these, on these policies. You know, there might be agreement on things like uh, criminal justice reform and such, but when it comes to some of these big economic policies that the Republicans are really concentrated on right now, we didn't see uh, a lot of uh, bipartisan uh, solutions out there. And I would also say, I think he, this speech was a lot to reaffirm his record as president. I mean, he talked a lot. It was very about, defensive. Wasn't yeah, it? it talked a lot about uh, where we are as, as an economy and as a country. Um, and we are in a good place. But then again, we, he didn't really talk about these bipartisan and, economic And there was that. And, and we, can, we can follow on from that and talk about actually that the theme of the speech was this idea that the sort of the curtain had lifted, right? That, that this is a, now a new era for opportunity in terms of changing and style of government, but also new spending, that there's the space the president believes because of a you know, retraction of the deficit. I mean, do you think that there is actually part of what's going on here is the president presenting towards 2016 to the style of government? And what, you know, one of the things that come, came out of the speech was that really, you know, a lot of uh, zoom ins on Elizabeth Warren and potentially the kind of president actually sort of pushing more towards her than the kind of Hillary Clinton, more centrist democratic vein. And, and again, for millennials, obviously looking forwards to, to the next president and whatever might happen in this Congress, there's, I mean, what do you think about that? I think the conventional wisdom is that the president is projecting to 2016, trying to define those terms of debate. I truly believe this president cares most about legacy. I don't think he's thinking as much about 2016 and he's staking his ground. Uh, because if he moves to the center immediately from the State of the Union, he won't have much room to negotiate. I think he's taking his ground clearly on the left on the tax reform proposals, like you mentioned, and he will have space to negotiate and ultimately find compromise uh, with the Republicans. I think he's seen, for example, what President Clinton did in the last few years of his term, and he would like to replicate some aspect of finding bipartisan compromise. And I'm not so certain he's thinking about, you know, Senator Warren or other 2016 implications. But what about things like when uh, President Obama spoke about free college for all? I mean, those are things that are not likely to go forward, but he could possibly be laying the groundwork for a candidate that's going to run in 2016. Do you think that's what was done with some of the agenda that he mentioned this evening? Well, th that's going to happen automatically. I mean, th this president knew that he had to outlay his vision. Uh, he had some uh, specific policy points, but really he uh, wanted to set the general theme of economic renewal and say, OK, now that we have recovered, what type of economy do we want to have? And do we want to have an economy that still uh, is persistently unequal? I mean, the United States is the most unequal uh, nation among the developed world. And, and, and all economic studies have shown and historical studies have shown that societies fail with this level of inequality. So whether you're Democrat, Republican, conservative or progressive, um, this is an issue. And I think that he's um, speaking to those issues directly. I mean, there's drastic disagreement between Republicans and Democrats on how to fix this inequality, right? And, uh, and I think the theme for Republicans moving forward over the next couple of years is going to be uh, do some stuff, but don't too, do too much, right? Their playbook is going to be, we have to show that we can govern but we can't do too much so that it looks like the Democrats have, you know, won out and then opens it up to, you know. To, and, and just to pick up on the community college point. So he really actually prefaced that by saying, you know, look what America did in the 20th century to be, have the best workforce in the world. We had a GI Bill. We made high school available to every young person in this country. And he wanted to see a cultural change where such a thing would happen for community college. Like you said, not likely to happen, but he definitely wanted to seed that idea uh, for the future. And I think the community college thing is probably going to be much more of a state's issue. I mean, right. that's where it's working right now. Uh, Tennessee Republican governor, uh, it's, they're, they're doing a really good job of it right now. And so I think that's the states, it's going to be up to the states. And that's really, I think, where Republicans want to be is leaving a lot of these decisions up to the states. Ryan, what do you think about uh, when you saw Joni Ernst delivering the Republican response, that a lot of the language that she used was very much designed to kind of appeal to heartstrings of voters. Uh, and then in the latter half of the speech, she sort of jumped into policy. What, what do you think that says that Republicans were so concerned about making that 
emotional case at the beginning there? Well, I think because uh, they haven't been able to do it in the past. I mean, the Democrats really have done a better job over the past uh, few years of, of appealing to voters emotionally. And so I think Republicans have to show that, you know, that, that we are human and that we, uh, you know, we care about these, these Main Street issues that you do care about because they're certainly painted as the uh, as the Wall Street Party, as the one who doesn't really care about what's happening, you know, at the kitchen table, and and they need to uh, to move forward in 2016.